Hello, this is the review of the Palette Custom Urushi in black Urushi finish with a fine medium nib. Let's get into the packaging the pen comes in. The packaging doesn't have any logos or anything on top, so it's very undisclosed. And inside you have the Palette logo, where the pen comes in the tray. In the back you have the warranty and everything like that, and the cover that comes with it. Now let's get into the pen itself. The body is ebonite, coated with Urushi. So it's very light and has a great feel. And this is an oversized pen. It has a typical palette clip, which is stiff. It says palette on it. I would not use this clip that often because you might damage your Urushi. It has a ring on top. And on the band, it says custom Urushi. Three star, which has Urushi in them, and made in Japan. It has a false piston knob. It's actually a cartridge converter. But this is an oversized pen, so you definitely have to be comfortable using the size. It has a two tone 18 karat gold nib. This is a size 30 pilot nib. Just their own proprietary numbering system. Has a plastic feed, and the nib section flares out quite a bit, so it's very comfortable to hold despite its size. The nib section is goes in Urushi as well, so that's a good touch. As you can see, I don't have too small or big hands, so. But yeah, this is still very comfortable for me. You can post this, but I do not recommend it. Since this is a Urushi pen, you might damage it. I very carefully posted it just for this demonstration. As mentioned, this is a cartridge cover has the black con 70 that holds 0.9 millimeters of ink but this is a pain and clean you have to keep pumping that thing but yeah this is a very light pen despite its size because of the Rushi and the Ebonite and this is just a very classic looking pen. This also comes in the Vermilion Urushi finish. There's only two finishes to this model. And this is just a bigger size of the Custom 845. Now let's get into comparisons. We have the Namiki Yuka Royale, which is a big pen to begin with. Then we have the Pelican 1005, which everyone says is a big pen. As you can see, it is dwarfed by the Pala Custom Urushi. Lime Safari, Visconti Homo Sapiens, Palacosome 2-3, Pelican and Mato 5, and 1911 Large. As you can see, this is definitely an oversized pen, and this actually weighs less than the Namiki Car Royale because of the ebonite now i'll just do a nib comparison between the llama safari pelican 1000 and custom urushi as you can see it is a bit bigger than the pelican nib which is a big nib to begin with as mentioned this is a size 30 pilot nib so i'll show it to a size 15 pilot custom 823 nib show how big the nib difference is basically the this is 15 this is 30 twice the size there you have the beautiful nibs and it's very soft nib the only comparison i can make in terms of softness is the pelican 1005 that i have which is similar softness but I've never had a pen with 
this kind of unique buying experience is the power customer Rushi because I picked the Nibes. As mentioned, this is a cartridge converter, so since this is not inked, I recently cleaned it. I decided to show how to fill up the CON70. As mentioned, this is holds 0.9 millimeters of inks, which is a lot of ink for a cartridge converter. But the biggest con for this is that it's pain clean because you have to keep pumping that thing. But it's a lot easier to clean than like the Pot Custom 3 or the Mont Blanc piston filler pens because you still can take out the cartridge and have it dry up a lot faster. Yeah, this is a, just a beautiful nib, and usually what I do is just fill it up then tilt it backwards so I could get more ink, and yeah, because I don't want to keep inking this thing up. This is a fine medium nib, so this doesn't take that much ink, since it's a Japanese nib, so it's on the finer side. But if you had the broad nib, then obviously you will run through ink so much faster. Hey, this is a great nib. Now let's get into the fan sample, which is the most important aspect of the fan pan. This is an 18 karat gold nib, two tone, fine medium nib. So it's so definitely on the finer side, as you can see. This is a very soft nib, and that's the most thing I like about this pen. Because I've baked the nib, is, it feels very soft, but it doesn't feel flexy like the Pelican 1005 because of the tipping, I suppose. Because very small tipping, so it's because of fine medium nib. There is some line variation, but not much because it's a fine medium. But you can push out some line variation, but I'm kind of scared because it's an expensive pen and I don't want to damage the nib. There's, it's pretty smooth under the reverse writing as well, which is surprising. This is not a two driver pen or a wet pen. This is midway, which is what I like. But yeah. Uh this is just great nib. Very enjoyable right with I use it all the time. Now let's get into final conclusions about this pen on what I like and what I don't like. I like the Roshi, the craftsmanship that comes into it which is a very important topic because that goes into the price. It takes a long time to make this, as you can see by the size. The, you can look up the Rushi technique, how long it takes, and it's seasonal and everything like that. I like this soft and smooth nib, which is very soft, and it's very enjoyable to write with. Now let's get into the cons. So this is an oversized pen. So 
even if it's very light and comfortable for me to sit at my body, this can be a problem for people with small hands that don't like big hand, big pens. So that's a, one big con of this for some people, but it's very comfortable for me. And the price. For retail, I think it goes for like $13.80, which is very expensive for a pen. And I paid a 6 8 pound, which is a great price category. Obviously, these fountain pens, fountain pens are luxury, and you're mostly paying for a craftsmanship that comes with the Rushi. So yeah, but in my opinion, uh, I think this was worth it for me since I already bought it. But yeah, thank you for watching. Have a great day.